Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School for today. And the Ark Missionary Baptist Church, 45 Church Street, Peterman, Tunnel Springs, Alabama, 36471. Telephone number is 251-564-2171. The church where everybody is somebody and Christ is the head. Reverend Waylon Oliver is our pastor. Sister George Oliver is our first lady. Our clerk is with Lisa Starwood. Sunday school is every Sunday morning. Uh, normally it's at 9.30 a.m., but we joined it on Facebook here for the past several minutes due to COVID-19. And we hope you've been tuning in to our Sunday school lesson on the church uh, website as well as on Facebook. Our worship services on second, fourth, and fifth Sundays uh, at uh, usually at 11 a.m., but we will be doing service in lately due to COVID-19 at 8.30 in the morning being broadcast by Brother Corey Robinson, our musician. Uh, today is the fifth Sunday, and services will be parking lot services, and Reverend Oliver will bring the message. We want to thank all of you that have been joining us over the past several months as we continue to bring you the Word of God through uh, Pastor Oliver and through the Sunday School, the Superintendent, yours truly, Freddie Howard. Our subject for today, uh lesson is, is uh, Unit uh, 3, The Call of Women. Uh, this is the winter quarter of 2020, uh, 2021. Devotional reading um, is Joel, the second chapter, 28 through the 32nd verse. The lesson is number nine for January the 31st, 2021. And um, the background scripture is Luke, the second chapter, 36 through 38 verse. Acts, the first chapter, verses 12 through 14. Acts, the second chapter, 16 through 21st. And the 21st chapter of Acts 8th and 9th verse. The print passage is Luke, the second chapter, 36 through 38 verse. Acts, the second chapter, 16 through 21st verse. And Acts and Luke's 21st chapter, uh, 8th through the 9th verse. Our key verse for today it shall come to pass in the days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. Acts the second chapter in the seventeenth verse. The big subject for today women speak out. Women speak out. Uh, as a result of experiencing this lesson, the participants should be able to do these things. Examine how God called and empowered women to proclaim his message. Affirm the contributions of godly women to the church's mission. Advocate for greater recognition of God's call women in the church. Key terms for today is dreams, that's a vision, prayers, supplication, entries, praying, prophecy, to foretell, predict, speak forth by divine inspiration. Prophetess, females who declare or interpret oracles are a female prophet. Redemption. In the Old Testament, reasoning from imprisonment for debt or from slavery, release from national and misfortune and so forth, liberation, deliverance, release, servants, slaves, persons who are enslaved, widow, a woman whose husband has died. All right, let us begin. Why this lesson matters. All people have unique purposes in life. How do we affirm each individual's purpose? Throughout the scripture, we find numerous examples of women responding to God's call. The lesson in focus. For many generations, certain tasks in the church have been designed according to gender. The assignment of ministry roles in the church is a long-debated topic that has only recently began to receive a form of balance. Despite the gender differences and sometimes biases, we can easily identify women who made great contributions throughout history. This is true in the African-American culture, generally American society, various civilizations throughout the world as a whole. While we affirm equality between the sexes, we often continue to struggle with what this means. This struggle, which is often internal, can also can cause conflicts and miscommunication within relationships, particularly regarding expectations and perceived responsibilities to and from one another. 
gender perceptions may vary between cultures and even among families within the same community and culture. As we grow in the world and in serving God, we should patronize, prioritize, rather, hearing the truth no matter who tells it. We desire the truth of the word, even when it disagrees with long-held traditions or practices. The Lesson in Context While we often equate prophecy with foretelling the future, the job of the biblical prophets was to speak forth the words of God, often prefaced with the word, Thus said the Lord. See Exodus the ninth chapter the thirteenth verse, Joshua the second chapter the thirteenth verse, first Kings eleven to thirty one, second Kings nine three, first Chronicles seventeen seven, and second Chronicles eleven and four. Today's church has a limited understanding of the role of prophetic ministries, often confining it to a supernatural ability to declare the future by the power of God rather than to speak a timely word from God. Biblical prophets spoke messages from God of warnings, repentance, instructions, and hope throughout biblical history. God called and anointed both men and women to stand in the fivefold ministry's office of the prophets alongside pastors, teachers, apostles, and evangelists. Most believers are well acquainted with the male prophets, but none, but not as familiar with female prophets like Deborah, Hoda, Isaiah's wife Anna, and the daughter of Philip. Peter wrote that the prophets were empowered to speak as they were removed by the Holy Ghost, Second Peter 1 and 21. Anna is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew name Hannah, meaning grace or divine favor. Ironically, the contents of Anna's prophecy concerning the birth of Jesus bore similarities to Hannah's song at the birth of her son and prophet Samuel. See First Samuel, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. What are your thoughts on women in ministry? Do you believe that God can use a child, someone with a questionable past, or anyone he can choose to spread the gospel? What would you consider prerequisites, minimum qualifications, or common characteristic traits of those who preach the gospel? Well, let me ask, answer that question. God uses whoever he wants to. Is that clear? God uses whoever he wants to. In fact, as I said before, God can even use you. Believers, this is the insight, believers of the Lord Jesus Christ continue to be divided in their opinion regarding the specific ministry roles God makes available to a woman. While society has begun to change its understanding of the roles of God has ordained for women. God has a role has has roles that He's ordained for women. There remains such debate on the subject, despite the discussions on positions, titles, and roles. Most believers agree that the responsibility to proclaim the gospel belongs to all believers, both men and women. This has become less and less debated on our communities. Those who are aware of church history can easily recognize that many meaningful contribution of great Christian women in every generation. I used to remember when um, Sister Hollinger and my um, dad would do a um, Sunday school lesson at an old home at Star Quarter at uh, Mount Sinai. Those, uh, when 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 Sister Hollinger, Reverend Hollinger's wife, would do Sunday school. It was on fire, just like it was on fire when my father did it, or uh, when Pastor Hollinger taught it. God uses whoever he wants, and he has been using women in the ministry for a long time. Don't get caught up on that. Uh, that's just another way the devil trying to distract you from hearing his word, that you're going to close your ears so when certain people are speaking your word especially when a female is doing it. All right, female Christian. Christians may never completely agree on some issues. Paul taught that all Jesus followers have unique value in the sight of God. Although they may differ in the ministry gift, 
they possess. God has not called believers to compare gifts among themselves, but to walk together in spiritual unity. The task of the church is not to debate whom God has called, but to help people grow in Christian discipleship, nurturing their gifts as they continue to grow in faith and impact the world. The church additionally duties lies in teaching the scripture and praying for the power and renewed vigor necessary to maintain the ministry to which God has called us. Let us begin with the commentary in Luke, the second chapter, verses 36 through 38. If you will, turn to your Bibles or with your Sunday school book. That's to Luke, the second chapter, 36 and 38th verse. We will be speaking from the King James Version. And here we go from the 36th verse. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phineal of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. Quite a woman right there. Quite a woman. She was of great age. All right. And with her husband seven years from her virginity. All right. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple but serve God with fasting and prayers night and day. Faithful as well. God's powerful. God's word. When God do anything, he do it in a way that will get noticed, that will be eye-opening and powerful indeed, such as this lady. And she coming in that instant gave thanks Likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. Man, great lady. God's good, ain't it? God can do anything. Coming up to them at the very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Ah. Um, Talking about a baby being born, Jesus Christ, God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit, God's Son. Oh, man. In both the Old and New Testaments, women are endowed by God with prophetic anointing. Biblical prophets spoke powerful proclamation from God. Those who are prophesied future events spoke with complete accuracy. Luke wrote that Anna had lived with her husband for seven years before he died. Just to introduce some contextual perspective, if she were married at the age of 12 and after seven years of marriage and widowed for 84 years, she would have been 103 years old at Jesus' birth. Is it also possible that Anna was 84, but most interpreters the text to say that she was widowed for 84 years? Whatever Anna's age, the writer seemed to compare the longevity of her faithful devotion and dedication to God. That is the outstanding element there, her faithfulness and dedication to God and how she lived her life in, 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 in that dedication to God. The depth of Anna faith is shown by her confidence that the infant Jesus was the promised Messiah and hope of spiritual redemption for the people of God. With this confidence, she began to proclaim that Jesus was the redemption sought by the people. That's in verse 38. Without the support of a husband, widowed women in biblical times were often impoverished and forced to rely on the goodwill and financial support of families and others, but were ultimately dependent on God. Ultimately dependent on God. How do you react when you finally receive a long-awaited answer to a prayer? (laughs) How do you act? Anna waited for many years looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, suggest ways you can uh, imitate Anna's patience, devotion, and faith. How about that? Patience and faith. That is a 
real commodity nowadays. A lot of us cannot wait for it.